Last time we were in this project, we were having a look at how to create 2D wall sections. We're now going to move on with using Archicad for 3D purposes. So we're effectively using 2D to understand some of the construction detailing, but also just to understand some of the simpler tools that we find in our document tab. We're now going to be looking primarily at the 3D tools that we find under our design tab. To do this, we're going to go to the ground floor first. Here you can see one that I've created earlier. And here we've got walls, slab. This is a single story building. So when we go up to roof, we see that there's a roof and that's all created as one element. We're now going to recreate this process. So we're going to go to ground and we want to sh show or turn on the trace reference. So this reference here for ground floor. So I'm going to right click show as trace reference and we see that it's currently sitting over the top of this and that's effectively what we're doing that's what we want to do we want to trace over what we've already got but because that's going to mean that I can't see what I'm doing and what's here is already existing what I'm going to do is to switch the reference for now you don't need to do this and I'm going to move it so I'm just going to move it to the side and that means I can just trace this again so you can see that it's now beside it I'll switch that back. So I'm now on the ground floor, looking at the trace reference, and now I'm ready to trace. Now when I grab a line or a wall, we can see that I'm not able to actually trace over this at the moment. And that's because if I switch back one more time, so switch reference, or if I go and click on that reference, so if I go to reference, ground floor, we did already import some other references here. But let's do this again reference ground floor instead of reference plan. This one is not exploded. It's a PDF, but it hasn't yet been exploded, which means that I can't interact with the element. So even though I can zoom in and we can see that it's a very good quality, it doesn't pixelate as I zoom in, which tells me that it's a vector-based drawing, I can't interact with it as vector elements. To do that, I need to select, right-click, explode into current view. I could also select edit, reshape, explode into current view. I have already created one that's exploded, but just in case you weren't sure how to do that, let's do it again. Select, right click, explode into current view. And when we do this, do I want to keep the original elements after exploding? So do I want to keep the PDF as well? In this case, I'll say yes. Now, this is not only going to explode the house, the walls and the other elements. It's also going to explode the dimensions and all of the text around the outside. So of course that's just going to make this a little bit slow. At the moment I'm not going to worry too much about that and I'm going to flip back to my original location. So again I could just go switch with current reference or go back up to my ground floor and we can see that it's still showing the PDF and th in this case the exploded lines as my reference. I can see that it's exploded because when again I get a line or a wall tool and I hover over the edge of the wall we see now it turns into a tick which means it's found that intersection point. Now as I zoom in it becomes increasingly hard to see where that exact corner might be and that's because of my ability to right click and say true line weight. So if I change this, I, if I turn true line weight on, we'll see that it doesn't immediately make any difference. Why is that? Because I've still kept my PDF. So if I again switch reference to active, and this time I select the PDF and delete it, switch back again. As I zoom in, we can now see that I'm always seeing a thin line or a hairline. It never gets thicker. That makes it easier to trace, but of course it's not a really good representation for when I'm trying to produce a drawing. So I can always turn the true line weight back on, depending on the scale of what we're doing, and see that in more detail. Now, of course, it depends on what pen line I'm using as well. So at the moment, it doesn't matter too much. I'll select the wall tool, and I want to start trying to replicate what we're seeing here. Now in this instance, when I'm drawing, I can choose a variety of different types of walls and I can draw those walls in different ways, just like we did with the line tool, the polyline tool, and the fill pen. So let's have a quick look at the wall settings in a little bit more detail before we start drawing anything. 
We can do this in our info box, which is this box along the top, and I can scroll to see more information, or I can click on this wall, or double click here, and that will take me into the settings, and I can adjust the settings in a little bit more detail that way. In this instance, I can draw with a basic wall type, a composite wall type, or a complex profile. These all have different functions. For now, we want to keep it very simple. So to keep it very simple, I'm going to use the first option, the basic option, and I'm just going to choose one that's relatively simple. Your file is going to look a little bit different to mine because I'm using a template that I've created. I'm just going to use this one that says Solid Fill. AED is one of my companies, so that's ArchiEd. That's what AED stands for, so yours again won't say that. But it'll say something like Solid Fill, and that will be fine for now. I then need to define the width of the wall. Now, in some instances, I'm not going to know that information. When I start a project, I might not know how thick the wall needs to be. In this instance, because we're tracing over an existing drawing, it makes it a lot easier to understand. So I can just measure that. I can zoom in and measure what is the thickness from the outside of the wall to the inside of the wall. We see that's showing up as 239, but that's a strange number, and I know that's not right. So what is the thickness of the wall? Well, we've already talked about this when we were doing the detailing. So if we go to our wall section detail, we can understand that this wall, being a brick veneer, is a total of 239. 60 millimeters in this instance. So in this case, we're allowing for 110 brick, 50 millimeters for our cavity, 90 millimeters for our frame, and 10 for our plasterboard. So again, 260 overall. So for now, again, we can change this later. For now, we're going to draw this wall based on a solid fill and making it 260. So we can already see, once we start drawing, that that's going to be slightly different to what we're tracing over. We can see that it's slightly thicker. Now this is part of the process, or part of what architecture or building design is about, and that's rationalizing some of the maybe early sketch plans that we have, maybe we drew them ourselves, or maybe they've been given, us to, given to us, and we need to understand how they relate and work to construction reality or to the systems that we're using. So in this case, we're not just going to blindly trace everything that we see, but we're going to be mindful of what those mean, how they relate to what we're drawing, and therefore try to draw with a little bit more thoughtfulness about the construction systems or the constructed reality of what we're trying to represent. Now when I draw, in this instance, I'm going to draw in an anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to go around the outside of the building, and as you can see, I'm currently using the outside line as the reference line. We can uh, eventually change that, and we'll talk a little bit more about why we might change that, but for now we're just using the outside reference, or the outside wall as the reference. One more thing that I'll change, this isn't overly important, we can always change this later, is the layer that we're using. It currently says wall interior. I'm just going to currently change this to say exterior, or in this case, structural. So let's start drawing. And again, I'm going to zoom in and be very specific because I need to make sure I'm clicking on the right part. In this case, we see that the distance is 6465. Now, is that a real brick dimension? Off the top of my head, I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's not. But in this case, we're just going to trace what we see, and then we're going to come back later and adjust these lengths to suit actual brick dimensions. That's a little bit complicated, so for now we're just going to try to keep it a little bit simpler. Once I'm happy with where I've selected, I'll click, and that's going to place my wall. Now I see the wall is placed, but at the moment it doesn't look very solid. It looks thin, it looks hollow, it looks empty. If I go into the settings, I need to determine why that's happening. I go in here, we see that the wall is 3 meters high, and it's 0 off the ground. So I'm happy with that information. Over here, 
in my renovation settings, I can see it's selected at, as an existing structure. I could change that to be demolished and it would disappear. Or I could change it to planned status or new status. And we see that it's now turned to be grey. Now, Renovation Filter can be fantastic when we're doing renovation projects, but otherwise it can be very confusing for people that are new to using Renovation Filter. So what we're going to do in this instance, under Renovation Filter, is change from Plan Development to No Filter Applied. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to be able to do what we need to do and not get confused along the way. Now I'm going to keep drawing. In this case, I'm drawing all individual walls. I could draw them as chained walls. And I'm just going to zoom in and zoom out as necessary and draw all the way around the outside of the house, again using that same point as a reference. Now I should also be mindful as I'm drawing Sometimes the angle won't be zero, sometimes it won't be flat, and that just can be because of a discrepancy in the way that it was drawn. I don't want to do that, however. So if I find that that's happening, what I might want to do is type in zero. In this case, we see that it's run too long. If I have any concerns about that, I can then select the wall selecting that black dot which is the node. I'm now going to hold shift which means it's restraining along that horizontal line and I'm going to drag it back until it lines up with my next point. So I've drawn a wall, it wasn't quite perfect, I've now stretched it into position and I'll zoom in and we can see that the set out position where I thought I was supposed to be didn't quite align with a, a normal angle. Again this is quite common when we're tracing other people's drawings or maybe early sketch drawings. It's very common that won't be necessarily 100% accurate. However, when we're drawing in ARCHICAD, we want to be 100% accurate wherever possible, and that's going to make the rest of our drawing a lot easier later on. Again, I can see this is a very strange number, 1199. That's nowhere near standard. At the moment, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to... Make sure it's straight, but not be too overly concerned about the number that I'm getting. In this case, what am I doing? I'm making sure I'm holding this line, making sure this is zero, holding shift to keep it straight, and then moving until I get to the edge of this line. Now, if it's not working, sometimes I have to be careful because I might be snapping to the wrong point. In this case, I want to make sure I'm snapping to the end of the wall and continue on this process. Now we can see that it's moving quite slowly. It's taking a long time to refresh and that's largely because I have all this extra information that I talked about before. So in this case I'm drawing based on what I can see rather than based on numbers. And so once we've done this we may delete this and start again and this time base it on figurative dimensions. So based on what the numbers say rather than basing on what we can see. That's two options for when we're trying to do this type of work and it can sometimes give us a better result by working that way. So for now all I want to do is finish this off. So I'm going to start moving a bit faster. We can see I'm not being perfect with how that I'm working. And to close, back to where I start, and we see that that's now finished. I'll turn the trace reference off, and we see that those walls are now solid black. So I could see through those before because of the trace reference settings. So when I go into the trace reference settings, we see that my active has an ability to be completely opaque, completely transparent, or somewhere in, sorry, yeah, completely transparent or somewhere in between, so we could call that translucent. So in this case, that was allowing me to see through my black walls to the trace reference below. So that's really useful in order to be able to do this. Now, as I continue, at this stage where I'm just drawing black walls, it's pretty easy to then 
draw the rest. So I could just see that the relationship between this internal wall and this wall, I could just make it another black wall. I'm going to make it 110 millimeters wide. And I could just click here and start drawing, connect it through to the other side. And as far as it looks at this scale with these settings, that looks pretty good. Now what we'll find is as we go along, setting up those reference lines or reference points is very important. And as we start to represent these materials, these walls, with more detail, more than just solid black, it becomes much more important how we go about setting out our drawing and the settings in which we use for them. Now I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information to begin with, so we're just going to continue this process. We're going to again, rather than using the exact trace reference that we see, I'm not worried about doors or windows because the way that Archicad works is that we draw the wall first and then we add the doors and windows into the wall once that's in place. So I'm just going through and adding this. We can see that it's not giving me a point to connect to. That's because it really wants me to connect to the reference line instead. So if I zoom in on the other side of the wall, then I can connect in here. And if I turn that trace reference off, we can see that the blue lines are now intersecting. What are they? That's our reference lines. That's really important. And we want those to intersect in order to get the best uh, representation of our model. We've got some more walls to go. Again, at the moment, I'm just tracing. I'm not trying to do this perfectly. It was a little bit tricky for me to know where to start this wall because it's a a wardrobe at the other end and it's a door at this end. So I'm just going to draw the wall and then I'll extend the wall. So there's a lot of different ways that I can do this. I could draw another wall or I could drag a copy of this wall. Move, drag a copy, drag it into place. Again, sorry it's a bit laggy. And that's because I'm just trying to have the trace that I'm tracing over a little bit complicated. So as we did before, switch reference with active. Just for now, what I'll do is to select all of the notes around the outside. Uh, but before I do that, I need to suspend the group. And I'll just delete all those extra notes. And by deleting those extra notes, it's going to make tracing it much faster. Switch reference with active. I need to draw this other wall. Now what I'll find is as I'm drawing, I need to remember which side my trace is on. Sorry, which side my reference plane is on. So in this case, I accidentally chose the wrong side. If I do that, I've got a couple options. I could stop, start again, connect from the right point, or I can flip the relationship. Flipping is okay as long as the wall type is not negatively impacted by doing it. In this case, it doesn't matter too much and it won't make a lot of sense until I start to explain this in more detail later on. So for now, that's fine. Now I have horizontal lines and vertical lines or in this case, walls. I'm, I'm pretty much there. I need to do a couple more to finish this off. Some of these walls we see run all the way through the building, some of them don't. And if I can't find where the reference plane is, I'll just do my best for now, and then I can always stretch it or adjust it later if necessary. Now I'm making a lot of assumptions, and that's the slightly scary thing about doing these drawings. I'm assuming in this case that all of these walls are 110 millimeters. Now I know that they're not all necessarily 110 millimeters. Sometimes they might be thicker, sometimes they might be thinner. At the moment, I'm just drawing it and I'm using one of the sides where possible as a reference, and then I can always adjust that later as necessary once I either make more decisions or as I get more information to inform my decisions. So that's it for now. I've drawn all of the walls that are necessary for this house. If I turn the trace reference off, we can see what we're getting. 
I don't have doors, I don't have windows, all of the the walls are just currently intersecting and I will need to adjust them later. But again, we don't just wall, we don't just draw wall segments with spaces for doors and windows. We draw entire walls and then we add doors and windows into the walls. So I'd like you to replicate what I'm doing now and then we'll move on and start to add more detail in the next video.